Cigar Time. Welcome back to your show all about premium cigars. We love it. Our audience just keeps growing and growing and growing. And we uh, get more of them, too. And we get yes. more of them. Yes. yes. We're now oh, in Tanzania. Over 60,000. <laughs> what did she say? We're in Tanzania. Tanzania, great. Tan On YouTube. Tanzanian devil. Over 60,000 eyeballs are watching this show every Tuesday night. And we thank you very much thank for that. Thank you. 60,001. And we just want to remind you, again, like last week, this show is brought to you by CLE Cigars, the manufacturers of Asylum and the CLE line of cigars. And we're very fortunate to have Tom, John. Tom, John. Oh, yeah. John Toscano <laughs> back with us. Well, his old nickname was Tom. Yeah. 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 When we get back to the show, Al. <laughs> <laughs> that that well, was Cynthia Fuente who oh, said that. Put a mark down. Anywho, <laughs> anywho. Uh, we just want to remind everybody Hello. that you can find us on uh, YouTube, on Facebook, on what else we got? Pinterest. 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 Twitter. Pinterest. Instagram. Instagram. Twitter. Twitter. Thanks, audience. And, and, we do, and we do have a website. And which is? CCCigars.com. That's? Double C. Cigars.com. Should have left him with Boy, that. Boy, what a bunch of unprofessionals. I was wow. wow. Unprofessionals. Uh, the the, the uh, lovely Miss T will tell us all about our cigar for today. Our cigar today is the CLE Corojo. Again, we have a wrapper, binder, and filler that is Honduran. Honduran. Ah, ah, yes! Ah, yes! Ah, yes! Ah, that's awesome. That's awesome. It's only written that way. Uh, that is Honduran Corojo. Uh, we have four uh, sizes in this one. Corona, Gordo, Toro, and a Robusto. And the flavor profile is earth, wood, toast, and pepper. Isn't and I just want to yes. point out that um, this has an unusual shape. It starts off as a, um, you know, as a normal size, and then it gets a little fat in the middle, and then it goes a little skinny again. So I'm going to let Paul a little bit later, or now, whenever, tell you a little bit about that and why. So. Well, I, I can't but tell you though, why. Um, well, I can, t I can yeah. tell you that this is a very, very old school traditional shape. In fact. Those of you that are old enough may remember cartoons with Bugs Bunny and a bad guy. And the bad guy always smoked a cigar that was fat in the middle and thinner at both ends. Yosemite Sam? That was a duck. No, that was, was Yosemite was Sam, right? No. Oh. Um, now, this, this size is also called an 1118. 1118. Yes, and it is. why don't you tell me what that's about? Uh, that is a date that uh, Christian is paying homage to his uh, mother. Oh. It's her birthday. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Jesus. So. Yeah. There used to be a, a 705. Yeah, yeah. It was his birthday. Which is Christian's birthday. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. The 1118 really is technically a Toro, uh, but it's it becomes thicker in the middle. Uh, I like to call it a pregnant Toro. Oh, <laughs> okay. really? Yes. Right. Yes, I love that. Why can't it this just is my be favorite size of all cigars because it's pregnant. ever. This is my favorite size. This is my favorite shape and size. It's it is. Lovely. Absolutely yeah. mine, too. Yeah. I, you know, I, Why? Scott, I agree. This is Why? my shape. My favorite shaped cigar. I don't know. Why? Now, what, what it just is. is. It just what do these cigars retail for? I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> He's uh, John, whatever you uh, It starts at uh, Tom John. Uh, <laughs> it starts at uh, six twenty-five. Oh, very reasonable. Yeah. yeah. I'd say it's a seven seven twenty-five. Right around. He's very there. in the yeah. sweet spot. He really stays in the sweet spot. That's why I really like some of his. What cigars. are you mumbling about? Oh. Nothing. <laughs> sweet spots. <laughs> sweet spots. What? Uh, We'll start with Scott. What's what your initial uh, impression? Right up front, um, spice, and uh, it feels like it's going to be a fairly full-bodied cigar. Paul? Uh, a little less spice than the other cigar, okay. but uh, I, I would say a more pronounced woody flavor and definitely full-bodied. Rob? I agree. It is... It is less spicy than the other one, but I do get a, I get a black pepper spice on this one as opposed to last week's, which I got the white pepper. Um, I do taste the earth and, and the wood coming through so far. The wood is coming through. Yeah. The wood is there. I agree with... Um, Wait a minute, I didn't call on you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, let's, Wait, let's all get this, ready. Yeah. Hold on. You find this earthy? A little bit. A little bit. I was more Marzy. Oh, my God. They're going right. to skip me. <laughs> Okay, right, as for me, <laughs> I find the black pepper. 
I don't find the heavy body, though. I get a nice taste out of the retro hail, and uh, all in all, it's a totally different Corojo than the Corojo right, we the smoked last week. Right, exactly. Very different. Yeah. Totally different. Oh, yeah, totally different. Absolutely. All right. All in favor of letting Tia say whatever she wants to say, raise your hand. I raise my hand. Go ahead. Thank you. Go, Go ahead, for it. You got three no. to two. <laughs> Actually, what I was going to say was... Thank you very much. Before you were so rudely interrupted. This, yes. This is the type of Corojo that I don't mind, that I do like. This has just the Muscle right tough. balance. Hey, yes, it tough. does. Because this is the classic CLE line, okay? So this is this is a good Corojo that I like. Um, it's not too much spice. I agree with Rob. It is a black pepper. I get creamy. I'm getting a little buttery. So I'm liking this. And then I agree with Art. It is not full body. I'm getting definitely in the middle and well, medium. It could be that you like Honduran Crow better than the Honduran. Honduran, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I think the eye really does a lot. So, Honduran's yeah. aren't aged as well. That's not a good comeback. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm not as good as you guys. True. Oh, she could say that, then I can say from the mouths of babies. Oh, no. <laughs> you were waiting to get that in there, weren't you? <laughs> Give that man well, a I got hearty. a few more, too. If the, if the show starts to go in the... Uh, Oh, I almost said a bad word. In the, uh, <laughs> course in the receptacle, I can I can dredge out a few more. I almost well, you better get them ready. Did you <laughs> the show started going in that direction before the cameras even rolled. That's, That's a good true. Point. Oh, sorry, going oh I know you're, you're, you're chomping at the bit to show the uh, remnants of your your butt tray there. So uh, I'm going to show my remnant butts. Yeah, um, and explain to us in great graphic detail. Well, I, I don't want to go on and on. Um, oh, don't worry, we'll give you the hook. <laughs> Last time we talked about canoes and, and uh, uh, rowboats. Tunnels. Tunnels. <laughs> and rowboat. today I want to talk about a problem that's even more common and possibly even more frustrating. Somebody showing up at the store with no money? Well, that's really frustrating. No, I wanted to talk about plugs. And I you've all had the experience where you yep. take a cigar and you clip it and you go to light it, mm -hmm. and no matter how you suck on it, um, you can't get it to draw. Oh, no. And it's annoying, it and it's know. frustrating, and some people, for some reason, <laughs> no matter what cigar they try, it's plugged. So I it guess what I, what I wanted to point out to you is two things about that. One is, why does a cigar get plugged? Once again, there are two reasons, and they're very different. The primary reason is if there is a a uh, tight clump of tobacco somewhere in the bunching of the cigar. Air just can't pass through it. And I thought by way of demonstration here, I would show you something. Here's a, a piece of a cigar. And you can see that mostly it's fairly spongy and soft until you get to about here. Mm. And here, it's hard as a rock. And you can even see if you look at the cigar end on the tobacco is clumped together very, very tightly. Um, and that's going to be a plug, and that's not going to draw. When you get a cigar that's plugged, there are a few things that you can... Oh, there were two reasons I said for plugs. <laughs> Excuse me. The second reason is sometimes if a cigar is over-humidified or if it's a particularly oily kind of tobacco, as you smoke it, because the insides are so wet, they tend to close down on themselves. And so sometimes a cigar that doesn't start out plugged will close up on you because there's too much, too much oil, too much moisture, and it, it just gets soft in the middle and sort of collapses on itself. Okay. Before you demonstrate that, can I ask you, why, why does it always seem like the plugs are down at this end of the, like why, why, how come I can never get a plug down here where I can just clip it off and I'm good to go? Mm. It's always at the, the head of the cigar. As a general rule in cigar factories, they want to put a little more tobacco towards the end that you hold anyway, okay. so that it doesn't get mushy when you chew on it or hold it in your mouth or in your, in your hands. Uh, so if, the, if it's packed a little bit inefficiently, the mm -hmm. most likely place for there to be a okay. lot is going to be towards the bottom. Um, so, the sec uh, so what can you do about a cigar that's plugged? Throw it out. <laughs> well, you can, you, you can do that, and if you happen to have bought, and it almost never happens, but don't they if, make Don't they make uh, rubber mallet just for that purpose? Yeah, <laughs> for throwing it out. Um, whether it's uh, 
a paper clip that's un, unraveled, you know, un, bent straight, or a nail, or some people like to use a wooden match, uh, or a device called the draw poker. Uh, what a lot of people want to do is just poke a hole and get through the hard spot. Uh, let me tell you, however, that that's something that you have to do with a great deal of caution. Uh, it's really a matter of simple physics. If there's a big chunk of tobacco in the middle and you poke something through it, it's going to spread it out. And as it spreads out, since the wrapper is only as big as it is, the wrapper is going to burst. Mm -hmm. yeah. So precision is going to be very important when you do that. And by the way, what what a lot and this is basically what you do. But what a lot of people probably shouldn't shake either when you do that. Well, that's uh, I don't have a choice in that one. Um, there you go. And now this cigar, if I was going to smoke it, would actually draw perfectly. Um, and I didn't. Until so she's got to go straight, go. also. Yes, yeah, straight. <laughs> well, yeah. federal There's an art to that. The yeah. federal <laughs> government keeps telling me that too. Yeah. <laughs> that I got to go. Sure. Okay. There's one last bane to smokers, and it actually has a technical name. It's called delamination. And what delamination means is that the wrapper starts to come apart and peel off of the filler and binder, uh, kind of like that. Uh, there are a few reasons for that. The obvious one is if a cigar is dry, the wrapper is going to split and it's going to start to peel off. But there are other reasons, too. Uh, sometimes delamination comes from uh, cigars being in a bag instead of in a humidor. And if you keep them in a bag for too long and they rub against each other, Ooh, they will yeah. rub the wrapper right yes, off of each other. Um, another reason, and it doesn't happen often, but it does happen, is that uh, the, the roller will not use enough glue along the edges of the wrapper when he puts it on. And so the edges along mm. the seam will start to peel. And once it starts, unless you want to re-glue it, it's going to come back. Um, so those are the, the, the four things that cigar smokers are frequently confronted with and almost always hate. Uh, I mentioned that there were two others, mm -hmm. uh, people who don't like the smell of your cigars, too bad. Um, <laughs> and the other one was taxes. And I just wanted to put this in a perspective for everybody. Um, in 1880, tobacco taxes represented one third Sorry, it was wow. only one third of all federal revenue. That's so, a lot. So basically, mm. the entire government was run, the entire country was running on tobacco tax, and 40% of that was cigar tax. Mm. Um, those taxes were uh, initially um, uh, decided on as a way to pay for the Civil War. Mm. And by, by the 1880s, Civil War had been paid for, but already the government was doing more than they could afford to do. And of course, as they do today, like tolls on bridges. They never go. They build the bridge, but they never go down. They never go down, and somehow us cigar smokers wind up paying for everybody else. I just want to remind everybody that uh, one of our sister companies, Barbecue Barbecue, right up the street from the Horsham Cigar Store, at 537. Easton Road in Horsham uh, will be sponsoring our repast after the show. Uh, last month our employees enjoyed a wonderful, wonderful barbecue buffet that uh, stuck. we had to pry them away from the table. Mm -hmm. They were going back so often. Stuck and uh, if you like barbecue, you can check it out at mybbqbbq.com. That's mybbqbbq.com. How do you spell it? Barbecue lasagna. I'll let, I'll let you. You got to try the barbecue lasagna. You it is to. it's fabulous. Incredibly good too. Oh, and point out about the buffet real quick that the sausage and peppers they make you cannot get that every day. You can only get that at the buffet. Well, same so. thing with the Which same is thing Monday, with the Monday and, the and Tuesday evening. Yeah. For 19.95, all you can eat. Mm -hmm. The choices, everything's on there. It's mm -hmm. just fabulous. And now back to the show. Oh, is that all right? Well, sure. Yeah. Well, we have, uh, John, why don't you tell us a little bit more about the the line that we're smoking? Uh, the CLE Corojo. Uh, well, the CLE comes in three different wrappers. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. got the Connecticut, uh, which is actually an Ecuadorian, Connecticut seed Ecuadorian. Look at his face. So that's going to be a little bit more, <laughs> that's going to be a little bit more uh, milder. All right. Uh, then you have the uh, Corenta, 
which is the Honduran filler and binder with a Corojo uh, wrapper. And then there's one that we're smoking, the Corojo, which is all Corojo. All right. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. That was great. Thank you. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's <laughs> get you a said. job. <laughs> I guess it's time to review our cigar. Oh, what do we have a guest for the... A guest? Don't you have to introduce someone? Isn't Tom introduce someone? rejoining Tom us Zuka? this week? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. We got to get him checked. Hey, I'm old. What do you he want? He thought I was Tom. That's why. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I probably have early uh, old timers disease. Old timer? Old timer. <laughs> uh, uh, we're fortunate again for a second week to have Tom Lazuka, who is Christian's partner in the CLE project. And uh, he's going to tell you all about Tom and CLE. Take it away, Tom. Hi, we're back with Tom Lazuka. Thank you for coming back for another show. Yeah, Appreciate it. Here. Good to see you. So, Tom. We were just beginning to talk about the cigars themselves last time. Yes. And I guess fundamentally we're talking about two lines. I know you have more, but there are two flagships, if you will, the CLE and the Asylum. My favorite. <laughs> and uh, my assessment is that the Asylum is sort of a pioneering cigar in two ways. First of all, I think it broke some price point barriers at a really good time to do that. Uh, but you also really pioneered some of the monster ring gauges. Yeah, that's been uh, a very successful segment of our business. You know, we, uh, Christian thought I was crazy for, you know, when I approached him and said I wanted to do s larger ring gauge cigars, he wasn't uh, that keen on the idea. But, uh, you know, and we weren't the first people to do it. Uh, whatever reason, Asylum just brought it to the forefront. It, you know, there were a couple other brands that had a 70 ring gauge, uh, but whatever reason, it just didn't take off. And then, you know, when we got out on the road and really started pushing the brand, uh, the 70s took off, and then we obviously went up to an 80 ring gauge also, so. And who would have guessed that that would take off the way <laughs> yeah. it did? Yeah. Well, I guess you guessed. Yeah. You absolutely. know what I like to do is that um, the 80 ring gauge, I like to take it and go into the bars, and. When I sit there and smoke it, they're like, what are you smoking? That's bigger than your mouth. It just looks hilarious. So, well, But it's a great cigar. At the Freehold store, if anybody starts looking at the 80s, we offer them batteries with it. <laughs> but there we go. <laughs> That'll be our promotion. And we, now, <laughs> talk a little bit about the flavor profile on the Asylum. Well, you know, the, the initial launch of Asylum, we had three brands. Uh, we had the Asylum 13 Nicaragua, which is a medium to full body Nicaraguan cigar dark habano wrapper esteli jalapa fillers uh, the cigar itself again medium to full it's going to give you some nice spice through the nose but a nice rich finish to the cigar okay uh, you know that's again when we when i was developing the brand you know price was very important i've watched so many brands come out at that 10 to 12 dollar price point and i didn't want to be there i wanted to make a great everyday cigar that somebody could go back to every day you know if they smoke four or five cigars a day I wanted to be three of them and so you know price was a, a, a huge consideration in in making the brand uh, successful well it definitely worked I mean home run on both scores thank you and now talk a little bit the the CLE which also comes in some pretty hefty ring sizes. Yeah, we go up to the 60 ring gauge in the CLE. Uh, the, the CLE line's a little bit more of our traditional Honduran lines. You know, we do the CLE Connecticut, uh, we do the Corenta, which is a Habano wrapper, and right. we do the Corojo, which is obviously authentic Corojo from Christian's family farm in Honduras. Uh, all of them have Honduran binders and fillers. Uh, and again, a, a really nice price point cigar too. You know, we started off when we launched two and a half years ago. They were around five fifty to six ninety five retail. So, uh, it was very important for us to be in an everyday price point. And if we look ahead into our crystal ball, so to speak, what do you see coming down the road for? Well, obviously, you know, over the last few years, we've developed a number of other products. You know, in the CLE, uh, we added CLE Plus, which is a little bit fuller body Corojo. Uh, we have the Aroa, which we launched uh, the trade show a year and a half ago. And then we came out with the CBT Aroa this year, which is the uh, binder wrapper filler, Kappa Binder Tripa Maduro, uh, which is a wonderful cigar. They, they're doing very, very well for us. Uh, on the Asylum line, we obviously came out with the Ogre, which is our barber pole, the right. Candela with the Habano wrapper. We have the CLE uh, 
pardon me, the Asylum Corojo, which we do out of Honduras, same four sizes, same price point as the regular Asylum and 13. Asylum Corojo, I haven't seen that yet. Yes, no, uh, so it's very that. good, all Honduran. Something to look uh, forward to. You know, we launched the straight jacket, which is more the premium side of Asylum, a uh, little higher price points, uh, higher primings of tobacco, aged four years minimum. Uh, so that's very good for us. And then recently, we just uh, we're getting ready to launch a cigar. Uh, called the Asylum Dragon's Milk, which is a cigar that I'm doing with uh, a brewery, uh, a craft brewery in Michigan. They make a beer called Dragon's Milk. It's a, a high gravity beer, 11% alcohol by volume. And so they make the beer in the, in the bourbon barrels, then they make bourbon in the bourbon barrels, and then I send the barrels to Nicaragua when I age the cigars very in cool. the barrels. So that's that going to launch very great. soon too. Oh, I can't wait for that. I, yeah, I can't wait for that either. That sounds dynamite. Have you guys thought about um, just doing a complete Candela wrapper on your cigar? You know... Because, I mean, I love the way the Candela tastes. A lot of people, some people don't, but I, I, I love it. I, I find it a lot flavorful. and. We have. We, we might, you might see that come along in the CLE line. Okay. Um, out of, you know, out of Honduras. I look forward to that. I'm definitely going to try one of those. And I'm definitely looking forward to that bourbon and beer barrel. I seen you on another interview talking about that, and I really wanted to ask you about it. And you said it probably won't launch until maybe next year it'll because be, of... Yeah, I mean, it'll be here the end of 2014. Oh, okay. very nice. Well, Tom, it's been a real pleasure. Uh, maybe we'll have you back again, but... That'll be wonderful. It's a good time. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Tom. Good Thank, job, Rob. Thanks, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Payne Weber. Yeah. And all the ships at sea. And all the ships at sea. We're going to review the cigar now. Scott. I like it. Todd, uh, Peter, go ahead. You go first. <laughs> you get no respect. He's, I don't get any respect. I get no, how do they go? I get no respect. Is that how it goes? No. no. Okay. Not at all. Never mind. And, you and, wonder, and now you wonder why. <laughs> They hey, if, you wanna be in the, if you want to be at the big boy table, you got to jump in there. All right, so um, I like this cigar, okay? This, well, thank this you very much. This is thank a, you. to me, a true Corojo, a true Honduran Corojo cigar. This is what I like. Now, I'll explain. The wrapper is gorgeous. It has that beautiful tannish brown true Corojo color. When I lit it up the first time, I explained I got less spice. I did a retro hail for the first time. I don't know if you guys got to see that, but I did get a little bit more spice in the retro hail. But when I'm actually just regularly smoking it, it is very calm. It's very, to me, uh, very creamy, which kind of gives it a, a heavy mild to a light medium um, of uh, strength. Um, can you retro hail again for our viewers? I'm okay, audience? let's do well, it. I'm, a, I'm afraid right. what happened when she retro hailed the first time, that's not exactly what they were looking at her for. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. I did it. Very good. Yes. Very good. So, yeah, you definitely get the pepper in there. I'm so happy I learned the retrohale because now nice. I have two different yeah. perspectives on good. the cigar. Scott? The left nostril. Um, I think right that now. the pepper <laughs> subsided a little bit. It's not as spicy. Uh, no, as this it, is so was. good. It is clearly a, mm -hmm. a full bodied cigar, um, but very creamy at the same time. Very smooth. Very good. Um, I got a little bit of, uh, and it's not a bad thing, uh, almost like a, I said this before you guys make fun of me, but a metallic kind of a flavor from it. But, very Sorry, good. Sorry, I don't Paul? get metallic. <laughs> uh, I found that the spice, again, tempered down a whole lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I find a lot of sweetness in this cigar, a surprising amount of sweetness. On the wrapper, yeah. yeah. And um, I think it's medium bodied. It's got a lot of flavor. It's full flavored, but in strength, I would give it a medium. Mm -hmm. And once again, and I guess this is just a hallmark of CLE in general, it is a smoke machine. Yeah. It yeah. just spits out a ton <laughs> yes. of smoke. Yeah. Yeah, the draw testing works real well with Christian. Yeah. Rob? Uh, I agree with Scott a little bit. Um, wow. I forget what he said. But I just <laughs> He's just bleeding out. Don't yeah, worry he's, about. he's bleeding. You ever out. notice that every <laughs> still wait, wait, wait. You ever notice that every time he I cuts him? Bleeding for a week. Wait, you ever <laughs> notice that every time Scott cuts <laughs> himself, he gets a metallic taste yeah. when he gets he a metallic smokes. flavor. Yeah, <laughs> it's his fillings. Um, I get the spice through the retro hair only. I don't get any spice at all through hmm. through the draw, at all. Uh, it is. I do get the, the woody taste 
uh, the, I get a toasty taste. I agree with Scott on the creaminess. I do get the creaminess. Yeah. I but I disagree. I don't think this is a very full-bodied cigar. No, not at all. I find it medium, mm. if anything. But um, It's very comfortable. It's, it, it is. is. It's Isn't clearly it? Corojo. Yes, it is. Clearly but sometimes Honduran. you expect... Corojo to really be in your face, and this is not. That's why I it's, exactly. a, it's a wonderful taste. Yeah. Get, I'm getting the wood. I'm getting the real Corojo taste. <laughs> it's medium. Hey, at my age, I'm happy. <laughs> and now it's time to put a number on it, and quickly, please. Uh, I, I, I'm giving this an 8.75. Oh. Wow, I agree. 8.75. 8.5. Yeah. Oh, I give it a 9. I really like the balance. Yeah, I give it a 9, too. It's a fine cigar, and I really love it. And what, what pushes me over the top is it's a great value. Mm -hmm. All of yeah, CLE right. cigars, whether they be big ones mm -hmm. or smaller ones, always represent a tremendous bargain in your, in your smoking uh, pleasure. So uh, all's good. Good cigar. This is this is my second favorite cigar that Christian puts out. Really, I like the I like the CLE Plus. Okay, I think what's that yeah. blend? Is that it, is all Corojo, also. Is it really? Yeah, that's the one with the red band on it. Yeah, we just use uh, higher primings on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's a fantastic cigar. A little bit more fuller body. Yeah, little, just a little bit more. Scott, talk flavor. about the events. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, we've got, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> For the rest of this week through March 1st, um, in all of our stores, it's by four of the CLE or Asylum. You get two more free from us. Um, and then we have specific events in this Thursday, the 26th in Fraser from 12 to 3. Then also Thursday, Lancaster, Lancaster? No, Phoenixville from 5 to 8. No, I thought. Oh, what? Oh, don't and argue about it now. We don't have time. <laughs> can't argue with anything. And then on uh, Friday the 27th in Lancaster from 12 to 3. Oh, and in those events, you'll buy three and get two free. Correct, yes. And now swag Tom, and I mean John. John. <laughs> don't, don't. Yes, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> if there's any time left, did you want to talk about a couple of new sizes? There's no yeah, time, time left. There is absolutely no time. There's absolutely yeah. no time. Never mind. Okay. Got it. <laughs> we'll put them on the Chiron or something. You can get yeah. that at the time to say goodbye, the, everybody. When you come to the event. Time yeah. to say goodbye. Life's too short to smoke cheap cigars. Sorry, Paul. Hi, Mom. Sorry, Paul. We were gonna, we're gonna be out of time. Smoke off and smoke happy. I think we need to do a group goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you very everybody. much for watching and come out to the CLE events. To you. Oh, welcome back to Cigar Time and forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> I'll forget about it. <laughs> the clock didn't work right. Oh my God. Welcome. So close that to being really, perfect. Thank I you. stopped. I caught myself. I in the <laughs> you were spot on. I just like the look he gave you. I know the look Paul gave it could kill. Did he? I wasn't. I was afraid to look. <laughs> God help us. Wait, look at this. Look at this. You great. Are we done? Roll, roll, roll. Look at this. Look at this. It's curved. It's got a hook. <laughs> that's a, that's a, called a Clinton burn. No, look, it's curved. That's what it's called, a Clinton burn. <laughs> they don't all curve like that. Rob says he is. Welcome You're to at Cigar the right Time. <laughs> <laughs> Provoked. Hey, yeah, uh, hey, uh. That's what it's really for. Sugar, isn't it? Yeah. What well, do you think? You're a moil? Get Scott's finger in there. Yeah, Scott's got his finger in it. Season.